This movie is a really, really well-polished turd. Hi, I'm Zach, and welcome to Not Great, Not Terrible, the show where we review mediocre movies from the not-so-distant past. Today's subject is Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, a computer-animated family film which came out in 2010. And, oh boy, this movie is a lot weirder than I remembered. So the movie starts out with an intro directly copy-pasted from a Harry Potter film, except without Hedwig. You follow an owl until he lands, at which point we start to meet main characters. We have Soren, Dickish Brother, Why Is There a Snake, Small Friend, Old War Hero, Owl Hitler, and f*** it, a few more owls for good measure. Why are there so many goddamn characters? Also, everyone's named after a bird pun of some sort. Are you f***ing kidding me? Anyways, Soren and Dickish Brother are doing sibling rivalry things, but they fall off a tree and get snatched by a necessary comedic duo. They're taken to the home of the Pure Ones, where Soren and Small Friend are separated from Dickish Brother. There's some weird plot things about moon blinking and metal flex, and some really f***ing dumb guards who somehow completely miss the full conversation they're having instead of being brainwashed. But handily, there's a seeker good guy who teaches them how to fly. But plot twist, Owl Hitler's wife finds out, and Dickish Brother is still a dick. But they can fly now, so they leave to find the Guardians, meeting a few more characters along the way, including that f***ing snake again. So they arrive at the Great Tree, but not before almost falling into the ocean and drowning, because we definitely needed a bit more drama. We have some owl politics, a musical montage because why not, and then we cut to Owl Nuremberg, obviously. And then we move on to some more training stuff in the rain, where Soren learns to trust his gizzard. I still have no clue what a gizzard is, but okay, let's go with it. Oh yeah, and it turns out Old War Hero is actually THAT Old War Hero from the children's story at the beginning, but he's retired now apparently. Anyways, scouts go to the Owl Nazi home base and see the f**kery going on, so a bunch of the Guardians leave to rescue the enslaved owls. But surprise! The unexplained metal flex from earlier are a secret weapon and trap the Guardians, so Soren and the gang have to go and rescue them. There's a scene with some spectacular fire animation, where that trusting gizzard thing comes back again. The tables are turned, and we get some aerial combat. Diggish Brother comes back, and is just as much of a dick as before, but he's dead now, so don't worry about it. There's a fight with Owl Hitler, Soren wins, and everybody flies home to the Great Tree Victorious. Except Owl Hitler's wife survived, and if the movie hadn't mostly flopped, there might have been a sequel. So this movie isn't all bad, but it does have some pretty serious flaws. For starters, the plot of the movie moves along like a freight train. It feels rushed, like they're speedrunning the story rather than actually going in depth. As a result, the audience is left with a ton of questions, like, what the f*** is a gizzard? Who the f*** is Glocks? What the f*** is moon blinking? What the f*** are these metal flecks? And seriously, what the flying f*** is a gizzard? We're also introduced to way too many characters, way too quickly. Okay, yeah, I know Sorn and Gilfy, but the rest are just kind of thrown in there for good measure. I mean, do we really need a great grey owl that plays the loot? Really? Also, this movie is pretty f***ing weird. Seriously, the whole plot of this movie revolves around owl Nazis. Like, apparently barn owls are racially superior and all other owls need to be enslaved? There's not even an attempt to make it subtle. No, no, no. This movie straight up shoves it in your face. Like, here's a scene directly from the film. As lower species, they are fortunate to serve a higher cause. No subtlety, nothing. It's just f***ing owl Nazis. Deal with it. The movie is also weirdly dark at times. This is, without a doubt, a really weird tone for a family movie to take. And as a result, everything just feels kind of... off. Now, I don't just want to be shitting on this movie. It definitely has a couple redeeming characteristics. For starters, the animation quality is absolutely excellent, and it's aged very well. They did a fantastic job with feathers, fire and water simulations, and lighting, and it looks downright spectacular at times. This quality is especially impressive considering the $80 million budget, which is not a lot for an animated film. Also, the film's original song, To the Sky by Owl City, is actually really good, and it really suits its scene. As I'm writing this, it's been a full day since I watched the film, and the song is still stuck in my head. Though, that may be nostalgia talking here, I definitely had that one on my iPod back in the day. And really, even though the concepts this movie covers are rather strange for a family animated film, it's not necessarily even a bad story. It's a bit shallow and a bit rushed, but it's still totally serviceable. So would I recommend you watch Legend of the Guardians? Honestly, I'm going to lean more towards a yes here. Don't get me wrong, this movie is still extremely weird. 
is oddly dark, a bit rushed, and has a few too many characters to keep track of. But even with the weirdness, it's still decently enjoyable to watch. The animation is excellent, but the shallow story brings it down a bit. And really, that's the whole point of this series. Looking at stuff that's not great, not terrible. Thanks for watching.